Hi, and welcome to the Assemblines Podcast. I'm Chris Torrance. Today I'm here in the Media Archaeology Lab, and we're going to try and get some old images off of this Amiga 1000 computer that was recently donated to the lab. So let's get started. So a few months ago, a gentleman by the name of David Hyde donated this Amiga 1000 computer to the Media Archaeology Lab. And one of the conditions of the donation was that we would try to help him get some old art that he had created off of the computer nearly 30 years ago. He was using the program Deluxe Paint 3, and he had actually recreated the entire Bayou Tapestry using the paint program, basically by drawing it pixel by pixel and then filling it in and his images were all trapped on the hard drive which he hadn't been able to successfully boot up for many years. So you can see that the system that was donated is actually really nice. We've got this power user hard drive here along with a fast track SCSI host adapter with a fast RAM slot from ZTech and it also has the RAM expansion here in the Amiga 1000 so it's actually a really nice system and once everything was plugged in and properly seated again it actually just booted right up and you can see that looking at the desktop here on the hard drive we have a couple interesting folders one is this folder named Bayou and then we have another one called DP3 which I assume stands for Deluxe Paint 3 so we can go ahead and we can start up Deluxe Paint now and once we do that, we can load up the images that Dave created 30 years ago. So let's just see what we've got here. We'll load this one called by 1-08. And sure enough, you can see here's some detail from the Bayou Tapestry. So if you recall from your history classes, the Bayou Tapestry was created shortly after the Battle of Hastings in 1066. <laughs> and it portrayed the defeat of Harold of England by William the Conqueror. In this detail, here's Edward, who was the King of England just before Harold, and he's sitting here on his throne. The detail in this is amazing, and if we can zoom in on this, you can just see that Dave, when he created this, he literally had to go pixel by pixel and then fill in all of these spots by hand. And there's about 30 of these images on the hard drive. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to try and figure out how can we actually convert these now so that we can get them off of the Amiga and onto a modern computer. So as the first step to converting these files into a modern format, what I did is I actually just took all the files off of the hard drive and I copied them onto floppy disks. And then we're going to go ahead and try and transfer these floppy disks onto a PC. Here's one of our Amiga floppy disks containing the art. At first I tried to transfer this image to a Windows PC just using a USB floppy drive, but it wasn't able to actually read the format. Somebody else said that you can actually format a Windows disk using a FAT format and use that on the Amiga, but it looked like you actually needed to install some additional software on the Amiga, so that was a no-go either. So finally I broke down and I got out the Cryoflux. And this is a small controller board that lets you plug in a floppy disk drive and essentially read the data down at the magnetic level off of the drive and onto a PC. The most confusing part about using this was actually the wiring, but basically what you're doing is you're feeding power to the disk drive through this wire harness and then you're actually controlling the floppy drive through the ribbon cable. So once I figured out how to actually hook it all up, it actually went pretty smoothly. So let's see the process for doing that. Once we have the driver installed for the Cryoflux, we can go ahead and run this DTC command to actually dump the disk. And we're going to dump this into an ADF, or an Amiga disk format file. And so we're just going to let it churn away. After I did that for all three disk images, I downloaded the WinUAE Amiga emulator, which has a nice command line utility for converting ADF files into actual files. We'll go ahead and run uaeunp.exe on our ADF file and tell it we want to dump out everything. And this goes ahead and just extracts all the files. 
So you can see here's all our Bayou Tapestry files. So this looks really promising. So the final step now is to transfer these over to my laptop and see if we can actually open them up. One funny thing is when I got the ADF files over onto my Mac, I suddenly found that you could actually just open these straight up. So I didn't actually need to use that Amiga emulator on the Windows PC. And apparently I have a program called the Unarchiver, which just opens these up. So here's all my Bayou files. And then to convert them to a modern format like a PNG, I downloaded this program called XNViewMP, uh, which is a pretty amazing program that can convert just about anything. So if we go ahead and fire that up and then navigate to where our files are, we can go ahead and take a look at those. And you can see, sure enough, here's our image file. So this looks great. And we can go ahead and click on one of these and there it is. And then what we can do is we can use the batch convert to convert all of these automatically to say PNG files. So I went ahead and did that and here are the results. So if we take a look at that one that we were looking at before and sure enough that looks like the same image that we were looking at before. The colors all look great and everything looks to be preserved. We've seen how we were able to use a variety of tools including the Amiga, a Windows PC and finally a MacBook to be able to convert these old Deluxe Paint 3 images from this Amiga 1000 computer. The next step is to give all these images back to Dave as PNGs and then he can finally print them out on a modern color printer after being locked away in the computer for 30 years. So thanks for watching.